Hey, everybody, I want to thank you for investing in the Shareholders Podcast once again. I'm Monty Mont. It's a blessing to be here, guys. Very excited to have a great guest uh, in store for you guys. She is an author, speaker, podcast host. She got her hand in a lot of things, y'all. <laughs> I could go down the resume, but it's, it's very awesome to uh, have her. Her name is Ashley Winston. How are you doing today, Ms. Winston? I'm good. How are you doing, Monty? I'm doing great. Thank you for coming on. Guys, we're going to try to, hopefully when you hear this, you hear it in time and we've turned it around to help uh, Ms. Winston out and we're going to get to that in a minute. But let's just start. Um, I love when I see someone's page uh, on social media and they just, they got so many things they're doing and it's so positive. It, that always attracts me. I'm like, man, let me try to see if I can get them on the show. And that's definitely uh, what I saw on your page. So where, my first question for you is, where does this passion, you have such a passion for what you do uh, in helping people. Where does that come from, that motivation? Well, um, I feel like I'm just answering a call. You yeah. know, we all have a purpose. Uh, you know, God put a purpose on the inside of all of us. And I just try to fulfill that purpose. And I feel like um, people are depending upon us showing up, right? Mm -hmm. And doing what it is that we're called to do. Because if we don't do it, who's going to do it, right? right. Yeah. And so I think the passion comes from the people I know in my heart that I'm called to serve, right? So if I don't show up, if I'm not in action, then those people don't get served. Um, and of course, you know, I love God. I want to please God. <laughs> so, but that's really where it comes from. Just really trying to impact people positively. And that's, um, th I love when you say call, when it's a calling, you know what I mean? And sometimes we try to run from those callings, but you know, it's, it's a Jonah and the whale. Trust system. me. Okay. <laughs> you can't, you know what? It's crazy. I feel like, um, every day I feel like I'm still coming more and more into what I'm called to do. Right. And the more I say yes to God, the more it begins to reveal itself further, right? And, you know, I still run from things, you know, God's asking me. I think we all have that on the inside of us because we don't know what's on the other side of our yes, right? When we give God our yes, we don't know what that's going to require, what type of sacrifice, what, you know, what we're going to have to give up, yeah. you know, really. And we got to give up control, right? We got to give up control. Um, but I think it, I just, this is really, I always say I'm in the wild adventures of faith. And it really is an adventure. And that's how I try to look at answering the call. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, every day, here, find something else out, you know? When you're walking by faith, so. Is, uh, that is that is so well said, you know. Um, that faith walk is, it's, it's. <sighs> It's faith for a reason because we can't see everything. We can't know everything. And so we really have to trust God in those things. So uh, you've now, you've written a book and it's called Break Free. And so tell us a little bit, and we're going to get to some details about what that book has led you to, but tell us a little bit about what that's addressing and what the inspiration was behind writing this book. Oh man. Well, uh, I really never wanted to write at all. You know, it's one of those things we're just talking about answering a call where a guy was like, okay, I kept feeling the push, the urge um, from God and even people around me to write. But I was really, really afraid because um, I'm like, who's going to read this book, first of all? <laughs> you know, nobody knows who I am. Who's going to read this book? And why am I sharing all of my life in this book anyway, you know? Uh, how, and so uh, how did I get to that place? Well, I was just following God. And I can't, oh yeah, the podcast came after the Break Free book. So, I, oh, I was coaching women. So I was coaching women at a coffee shop across the street from my house. And in doing that, it had kind of turned into courses and, you know, having curriculum and all that type of stuff. And then God took me to a place where it kind of mellowed out for a minute. And he was like, write a book. Um, he put somebody on my path that confirmed that I needed to write it that year for whatever reason. Um, and I really didn't know what I was doing, to be quite honest. I was just following God and, uh, he gave me the, the name, right? The book, actually the name of my company, which is Break Free, Be Unstoppable. Um, mm -hmm. the book came out of that. And it's just me telling a little bit about my story about the series of events that I've gone through 
where I was able to break free of things through my relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And at that time, um, when I first started writing the book, I was coming out of a terrible relationship. I was engaged to be married. I had called up my wedding. I really didn't know what was next, what God was doing. Everything kind of hit rock bottom. And then that's when God started to begin to reveal to me the call, like we were talking about, yeah. and more about my yeah. purpose and what it is that I was supposed to be doing. So that's kind of where it came out of, really one of the most terrible seasons of my life. <laughs> that is so amazing because I've had people on who've written books and they kind of say the same thing. First of all, they say, I wasn't trying to write a book. I didn't want to do it. You know, it was, I didn't know what I was doing. But, and if people have seen this show before, I, I say this. I just, just put it out there. Just put something in the atmosphere. Let it, you know, let your gift make room for you and you will be amazed the places it takes you. So from writing a book, you then, like you mentioned before, you transitioned that into a podcast. So, yes. you know, what I've learned with podcasts, and I want to ask you, you know, I have not written a book, but you, you write a book, but then a podcast is kind of like a recurring thing where you're kind of keeping that momentum going from the book. So how has that helped you in terms of getting your message out, which is the most important thing, whether in book form or in podcast, you know? Sure. Well, to, you know, I'm a faith girl, so I'm always going to take it back to faith in God. But it's true because I honestly had no clue what a podcast cast was at this time. Um, I mean, for real, you can ask anybody around me. I really didn't know. But um, again, you know, seeking the Lord. He put it on my heart and then he kept using people around me to confirm, hey, have you ever thought about doing a podcast? What about a podcast? You want to do a podcast? And so I was like, well, I guess I better have a podcast, you know, and God, right? Honestly, I mean, it was just like one confirmation after another. And then God put somebody on my path who opened up a door for me to be able to start my podcast. And then after a couple of, um, not I was gonna say a couple of seasons, after a couple of episodes, the Holy Spirit just kind of moved me into learning how to do production and do it myself, mm -hmm. which I really didn't want to do <laughs> once again, right? But, um, and then I just started to learn a little bit about production and the behind the scenes uh, of creating the content. And you know, you have a podcast. This is a lot of work, right? For 30 minutes, okay? <laughs> but um, I feel like it's really helped kind of bridge a gap in, in my me being able to serve people like they have the book but then it's there's a way for them to kind of engage with me regularly and hearing me break things down more right yeah. um and also you're able to reach a bigger audience you know we kind of looked at the stats on the break free podcast uh, we look at them quarterly and it's just been growing it's really cool to see the different countries that the podcast is reaching like i didn't even i didn't even know how to look at the stats you know so one day i'm like oh is anybody even listening to this thing <laughs> And uh, we started to look into it, and it was really cool to see in so many different countries, you know, and, um, you know, different places that people are listening. So it's helped me definitely help more people um, understand more about walking with God and yeah. more about uh, stepping out on faith and being bold and having courage to do what they know in their core they're called to do. Yes. So, yes, I'm extremely, I mean, it's really a me and technology this is a miracle <laughs> it really is it's a miracle you know what but that is that is so true i mean it, it's kind of this whole podcast kind of has a steam of your call and answering your call but you know back when jesus walked the earth they didn't have podcasts you know they okay. didn't have tv they didn't have internet and all that stuff so he made available what he could use but because of technology and like you say somebody's listening to you in a different country who you might not ever meet might not ever see, but the fact that your message is going overseas and they can hear what you say. And, and I tell people, and like you said, you, the things you went through and some devastating things you were able to translate into a book and then into a podcast to inspire somebody else. And that's, that's, there's nothing like whether you're in church or you speak with somebody and what they say resonates to your spirit. Like, Oh, I went through that. I, I can relate to what he or she is saying. And that, is that is that is that makes it all worthwhile you know all that all the preparation and work oh yeah i totally agree with you and i feel like the more i share my testimony the different parts of it the uh, the more i realize hey we all went through this <laughs> you know i'm like okay you that happened to you too okay that happened to me too so let's overcome this let's not stay here right but i think a lot of times we feel like we're alone and we're we don't have anybody to share those things with or to um, 
just work through things. Sometimes we need more than like Sunday and Wednesday. We need like a touch, a personal touch, a conversation, something to be able to move past those things that um, are challenging and really hard to get over. Yes. I mean, it's, it's so apropos, um, but, and not feeling like you're alone, you know, that, that can, because the enemy loves to, you're only going through this, doesn't nobody understand, you know, and it, it makes people go into this isolation mode. But, um, so absolutely from your, from your works, you are now up for a kingdom image award. Oh, let's just, how does it feel like to be, to get, when you heard about this, how'd you feel? I was like, oh, somebody knows who I am. <laughs> Oh, honestly, like somebody read the book. You know, you know how it is when you're following God, you're doing what's in your heart to do. You're kind of like nose down. You listen to God. You're trying to figure things out. You don't really know yeah. who it's impacting until somebody says, "Hey, this is impacting me." Right. right. So that's how I felt. Um, to be honest, I was like, "Oh, this is impacting somebody." Praise God. It's yeah. not for nothing. <laughs> so that's my, that's my honest response. And it, of course, totally just um, really grateful for their consideration. And um, whoever put my name in the bucket, thank you if you're out there listening. Uh, but yeah, just really grateful and excited. So we're going to hit this now. I'm going to hit this again at the end, you know, podcast. Some people listen and they stop. You need votes, you know, for people to vote for you. So we're going to sure, yeah. try to get this out because the voting is about to end. I think you said on the tomorrow, Thursday, or yeah, or today, if this airs on that day, thir- uh, October 1st, midnight uh, Eastern Standard Time. So how can they vote? Like, can they just tell them now and we'll do it again at the end of the show? But how can they sure, vote? Sure, absolutely. You can um, go find me on Instagram at the Ashley Winston and the link to vote is in my bio at the Ashley Winston on Instagram, or you can go to kingdom image awards.com and vote. And it's the first category, right? Right at the top. It says author of the year and you'll see, um, you know, my name on there. And there's a lot of other amazing people who've been nominated for all different types of um, published works. So check it out. Yes. So you know, new song, song of the year, they have everything on there. So vote for me, but vote for some other people too. <laughs> right. Spread it around. But we, right. We spread it around. For Ashley as well. So we'll, we'll hit that again, but I just wanted the people a little station identification there. So let's talk then and uh, transition a bit because, um, you know, 2020 has been quite a year. Um, Indeed. A lot of, Indeed. Lot of things. So in terms of, like you said, you were, uh, coaching women, you, you're a speaker, you're, you know, not just an author, you do a lot of, of motivational things. What are you kind of telling people or helping them cope with the things in this pandemic and how do they deal with it? And then especially for believers. So I've heard people say like, man, my faith is wavering or man, why is God letting this happen? You know, what, what are you kind of coaching people up in terms of how they're dealing with 2020? Right. Tough, tough question. Um, you know, everybody's having a different experience in 2020, mm. right? We're all different. We're, of course, this is a collective um, global trauma. That, that's true. But within there, we're all having our own experiences within that experience. Mm. And what I found in coaching a lot of different types of people, um, some in business, some life, some combination, that a lot of people in this pandemic, God has been realigning to their original like their original intended plan and purpose, right? Which can be uncomfortable if you're way over here, (laughs) right? If you're way over there, you're supposed to be over here. That is a lot to cope with. So I see that happening. Then of course, um, of course, dealing with the grief from the people that we've lost um, because of COVID um, is just like tragic, honestly. It's heartbreaking to see the families of people going through that. Uh, I'm just kind of giving you the... Oh, yes. What I've been experiencing, and I'm going to kind of go inside of it a little bit. Um, Dealing with that. And then um, people losing their jobs. I mean, there's just so many scenarios, right? And so I have been having to deal with each one of those scenarios differently and just been sensitive to what each person is experiencing. And it's kind of challenging because on one hand, you have these, some people are prospering in the pandemic, right? It's going to new heights. And so it's this crazy um, it's this crazy thing to juggle, but one of the things that I've been suggesting and I've been practicing myself is like, God is not thrown off by what's happening. Mm. Okay. 
God, he, he did the end from the beginning. So he know, we're, he's not like freaking out. So the best thing that we can do is tap into the presence of God and seek him for what we should be doing in this time, especially as believers, because there will be an after this. Yeah. Okay. And what is our role in this and the after this? What is it that I'm supposed to be doing? What am I supposed to be learning? Who am I supposed to be coming? Who am I be becoming? Who am I supposed to be serving in this time? in order to move into the after this, yeah, which is going to be the next part of putting our world back together. And so that comes from relationship. I'm very thankful for this time personally, completely against what's happening, but thankful for kind of like the slowing down that's occurred. It's like speeding up and slowing down at the same time because it's a great oppor- this is a great opportunity to clean your house, so to speak. Yes. For whatever the new thing is, right? God says he's not going to put new wine in the old wine skin. So this is a, a great time to become the new thing. And I really feel like that's what God is doing. And so I'm not sure if I'm answering your question all the way, but just I feel like I'm coaching people on what the new thing is, helping them cope with the new thing, right? Give them strategy for the new thing, mindset for the new thing, prayer for the new thing, praise for the new thing, right? Yes. Because that's really what's happening and it's happening pretty quickly. Man, that is that is as great an answer as I could imagine. That was I love that. I wasn't even sure if I was answering it. <laughs> oh, because really, are you not just you know coping and dealing with what's going on here, but that after this, you know what I mean? Be prepared. You know, at no point I believe has God ever told His people to just sit and do nothing. You have to be even if you don't have a lot going on. Like you said, seeking His face for once we get through this what am I going to do after this? Don't just, you know, sometimes with believers, we'll hear God speak a word. And then we say, great, God do it. And we don't put any kind of preparation into it. We don't get ready. You know, like they say, stay ready. So you don't have to get ready. You know, sure. and so, um, I, I, that, that was, that was. Yeah, we have to be ready as a body, as the body of Christ. We have to be ready in church, in, in, in churches because people are going to need more help than they've ever needed. After, they need it now, but even after this. So we have to make sure that we're in a position where we're well enough spiritually, right? Tapping into not our strength, but the strength that we have in Christ to serve these people, yes. to help them. Yes. And to bring those that don't know the Lord to the Lord and those who know the Lord who haven't been doing nothing to do some stuff and all of those other things, those components that are a part of the new thing. Definitely, definitely. So now as an entrepreneur, you know, we've seen in business and and finance and things like that, how the landscape has changed as well. And you've had to adapt and, you know, it's, it's, it's a great thing to have a podcast and things right now because you know a lot of people are home or and things like that but what are uh some things you've done maybe differently pre-pandemic to now in terms of you staying active as an entrepreneur pandemic to now well i've had a lot going on in this pandemic to be honest um I'm has it been more for pandemic. you like has it been well, more? yeah my business is yeah my business has definitely increased in the pandemic um i feel like you know when pressure hits we whatever's in you is what's going to come out under pressure, right? So it's like some people thrive under pressure, some people don't, whatever's there, that's all you can really work with, right? And so I think the pressure hit and I was just like, I got, I mean, I don't have any answers. I have to just go to God, right? And get in in his face a little bit. But in this pandemic, um, as it relates to being an entrepreneur, this was a lot because I I moved in this pandemic from the city out to the suburbs. Um, I actually had to live in a hotel uh, for a month in between moving into my new home. So I moved twice. It was a whole long, crazy testimony um, while still trying to manage my business and things like that. But one of the things I will say is that I just decided to embrace the areas where I was most uncomfortable um, mm-hmm. in all of this transition, which is the online space. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like, if this is what we're going to do. Then let's just lean into it. Let's just see, let's just find out what we can do here. And I feel like that's what I've been doing. Um, to the best of my ability, with the resources that I have, with the help that I have, with the knowledge I have, uh, with with the Lord, and just kind of engage people where they are, which I think that's what ministry and any business that you have when you're serving people, it's really about meeting the need, right? 
of the people. So I guess that's what my focus has been. Like, how can I meet the needs of people through the online, in the online space and be authentic to uh, who I am and what, you know, what, what we represent. And so that's really, and it's crazy because I was like the most anti-social media online person. I mean, not, not like against it, but just didn't know what to do. I've just really just been trying to grow in it over the last couple of years because I feel like a lot of the people I'm called to serve are there. That's uh man, that's well put. That's you really, you really just want to meet the needs and, and, and get to get the access to people as, as quickly as you can. So exactly. Because they are looking for it. They are looking for it. Yes, they, they they you have to make it available. They are, you know, I always say there's a coffee shop. When I moved to my place, there's a coffee shop that was built. And I was like, man, you know, it's a weird place to kind of build a coffee shop. But once they built it, the line is out the door. Every time I drive yeah. and I said, where were these people at before they made the coffee shop? But they made it accessible and they're they're doing great. So yeah. That's awesome. I wanted to ask you to um, just to transition a little bit. Uh, coming from a social justice perspective, and as a black woman, and you know, once we're taping this, we it's been probably about a week or so since the Breonna Taylor, uh, what we heard about that, which was very disappointing, and things like that. What are some things that you, as an influencer, want to see still? address i mean there's there's been some social justice and we've seen some people and there's been there's been some awareness and protests and things and it's 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 getting there it's not what we want it to be of course especially with Brianna taylor but are there some things that you still want to see addressed and or fixed in terms of especially because i sometimes feel like black women still kind of mm -hmm. get put behind I, you can say it yes get put behind behind the scenes behind the, yes yes <laughs> And yeah, you know, I feel like there are a lot of things that we need to change still, right? But I'm going to speak on what I think is the solution potentially, right? Because we need more leaders. Mm. We have a lot of influencers, a lot of um, people in positions, but we need people who are willing to be leaders, people who are willing to go through their process with God to become the person that can lead and make decisions in these places of power. Mm -hmm. We need more people of faith um, who understand who they are in, in Christ and the authority that they have in these positions. Yeah. Okay. That's where I might come from is always going to be. So yes, I want to see leaders rise up um, in this, in this time to continue to speak out against things that are unjust. I want, of course, equality. Hello, right? Gender equality. I mean, we could go talk about this all day long. It, it just has to, I, I, I'm excited though, because we're talking about it though. Right. So we're, we're getting somewhere, right? I mean, we, we really weren't talking about this much before all of this. So it's like, you know, the lid is off, but now we need leaders who are comfortable enough having the uncomfortable conversation, bringing the right people in the room. Does that make sense? Helping yeah. the people um, develop and their, their giftings be cultivated. That goes back to discipleship. Right, helping them become the person who can sit in these seats of power and say what needs to be said and make tough decisions because that's what we're missing. For and I remember, um, like a couple of weeks ago, I was praying about uh, God put it on my heart really heavy to pray for the nation and things like that. And I wouldn't consider myself the most official government, you know, um, brainiac, right? I know some stuff, but you you get what I mean. Yeah. But he was really putting on my heart to just come on and go into prayer in this area. And I was doing, I was casting out everything. You hear me? I'm a cast out a you know, flying dragon. I'm I'm doing every, you know, I'm trying to just get the nation together through prayer. And you know what the Lord said to me? He said, Ashley, pray for vision and knowledge. Mm. Vision and knowledge. And I was like, Lord, now I'm casting out everything. Why and vision and knowledge? Because when there's no sight, what happens? Mm -hmm. Right? When there's no vision, the people the people perish, right? Mm -hmm. So there's, there's no vision and also knowledge, he says, right? So vision and knowledge, we need, we're, we're suffering from ignorance. Wow. Literally. A lot of what's happening when you check and all that, lack of knowledge and vision. We need people in places of power who have the right information, knowledge, and sight. 
natural sight, spiritual sight, so they can call the shot and, and put things in order that are out of order. That's my answer to it. I don't know. No, that is, man, you're just, you're, just, you're knocking it out of the park. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I mean, there's a lot more to it than that we know, right? But I'm just saying this is what God's been dealing with me about in cultivating my own leadership skills of really making sure that I'm seeing, right? I'm informing myself, et cetera, so. I mean, vision and knowledge, that's a, that is a foundational truth. That is that is outstanding. Um, we're- Well, he says, my people perish, sorry, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge, yeah. And then also where there's no vision, the people perish. Yeah. I kind of jumbled it up, but, but yeah. It's apropos, especially in 2020. Um, we're gonna wind this up with Ashley Winston. This has been so amazing. Just real quick, I wanna ask you too, have, has you had any mentors, any people that have kind of helped you along the way, you know, because I sometimes think people feel like they see you as just a finished product. Oh man, I wanna do what she's doing. I wanna be like her, but they don't know, you know, being able to be poured into and be able to be ministered to. Sometimes people aren't as receptive. They think they know it all or they think I don't need any, but what I've seen doing this show with, various people I've talked to in various careers, they all have someone at least that, no, this person really helped me. I just want to know, do you have any people like that? Absolutely. Here? I will say this. I haven't had a ton of like face to face, hands on mentorship. Like I haven't. And I feel like a lot of, you know, people in this, a lot of my peers in this generation, we don't have that all the time. Like people are busy <laughs> and it takes, it's, there's a level of sacrifice involved. You know what I'm saying? Where people actually spend time, call you, you know, the whole thing of this is my spiritual mom or dad. We got a lot of that floating around, but very few people really doing that work, you know? So I, I'm just being honest. And, um, but I will say that I've had, um, I've received the most from my church, uh, Living Word Christian Center, Pastor Bill Winston, Dr. Veronica, um, or Dr. Bill Winston and, and Veronica Winston. They have just, they're amazing being underneath the, that word has transformed my life. And also um, his son, Pastor David and his wife, Nikki Winston, they have been um, a huge influence in my life and really given me opportunities to fail and learn and try. You know what I mean? What I mean by that is a safe place to try things, not get into grow as a person, as a leader, as a believer, which I'm extremely grateful for. And I would say that environment, um, is right like that's really where i learned a lot and serving yeah. serving um because you don't really you you might know what you can do what gifts you have a little bit but when you start serving people and their ministries or whatever they've got going on you can learn more so i think serving at my church um serving other people's ministries other people's businesses mm -hmm. has really um what i'm saying is sometimes the environment is the mentor Mm, that's good. Yeah. So yes, uh, there's some people, but I would say in my life, there have been a lot of environments that were my mentor. Um, and that's really what's helped me. And then I've got some spiritual parents that kick me in the butt when I'm out of line, <laughs> that, you know, that my bumper, my, I call them my, um, my bumper lanes, you know, you go bowling or whatever and the ball, they keep me in I, exactly when I'm okay. Okay. Daughter. And I'm extremely grateful for them. Man, that's a that's a great answer to environment as well. That is uh, that speaks vibes. Man, we getting some deep gems here today, y'all. I hope you're paying attention to this, man. So, last question, real quick. Any sure. book you've read? Anything that you I like to kind of keep my readers or my viewers listening oh. and reading? Anything that you've read? Yes. Or favorite book? What's oh, that's my favorite book. Um, that's do you see these books? And I have all these books downstairs. <laughs> I really like um. Push by Cindy Trim. Mm -hmm. Do you, are you familiar with that I don't, book? I don't know that one, no. Push is just about like bringing forth your purpose and, you know, prevailing, you know, in the mm -hmm. things of what God's called you to do. I like, I'm looking back here. Push is probably one of my, um, oh, the Deborah anointing. <laughs> oh. I love that book. That's one book I read recently that's been a game changer for me. Nice. Um, because I feel like in the Bible, well, I shouldn't say everywhere, but it's kind of hard to find content. Like we were talking about, about women in the Bible, like good content and um, uh, messages on women. You got to really search on YouTube for this stuff. Yeah. And so recently um, in the pandemic, uh, God kind of led me to a study on Deborah and I got the book and the workbook 
And that, it's, it's right here, this book. Um, it's uh, by Michelle McLean Walters, this book. It's really blessed me, the, the Deborah anointing. So that is just a great book. Awesome. A lot of revelation. Um, good, good recommendation. Good. I, I, I have not read the Deborah, but I've, I've seen it. So good recommendations there for sure. Uh, so real quick, again, one more time, sure. give me your plugs so we can make sure. And uh, guys, we are going to try to get this out on the 30th today, but if not, definitely on the first. So if you're hearing this on the first, hustle up because you just heard, if you got through this whole podcast, I mean, come on now, environment is your, come on, she just dropped some bombs on this support please so go ahead thank you so much yeah you can just vote um uh at kingdomimageawards.com for author of the year my name is right there ashley winston or find me on instagram at the ashley winston and the link to vote i'll keep it up there it'll be in my bio it just says vote for ashley or something like that in there you have until october 1st midnight eastern standard time okay and your and the name of your podcast too Sure. The name of my podcast is Break Free with Ashley Winston. Awesome. Thank you for the time. I really appreciate it. I was Thank you. It. And um, man, that was an outstanding interview there. So guys, please check her out. Of course, you know where to check us out at. We're on the Mighty Sharp Network. Uh, our favorite scenes. We have the Shareholders Podcast, which is this one here. We got a couple other things, but you guys stay informed and, and, and be safe out there. And um, as always, be blessed. Thank you again, Ashley. Thank you so much for having me. This has been a production of the Mighty Sharp Network. Executive producer is Monty Mont. Watch the corners and always stay sharp.